2015 for December 13th, 2021. This is our last storm report for the year 2021. And on today's program, we'll talk a little ACU men's basketball, the number six team in the country with uh, another impressive win on the road in surprise as they took care of business inside the Faith Center and they knocked off Ottawa 76-72. We'll talk with Hudson Wealthy on the program about that contest. And we'll also talk about the... Cactus Classic that's upcoming here Friday night, a top five net matchup here in the country. Carroll College against ACU, five and six, if you will. In fact, four and six to be completely accurate. Top ten matchup, let's just put it that way. <laughs> there you go. For those of you in higher math, and uh, we're going to talk about that with Hudson Wealthy, and we're also going to talk a little women's basketball with Rusty Rogers and their success over Ottawa as well, and we will also be welcomed uh, on the show. We will welcome um, T. Waters and Graciela Roy Ball. So a little shout out to Brooke Polite. We were going to have you on. We'll see you next time, and uh, we wish you well, and you get back to us soon. Without further ado, well, no, let's let's tell you what else we're going to talk about on the show. We're going to talk with Rusty Rogers about uh, the number twenty four team in the country. That's the University of Montana Western. We'll get into that as well, and then T Waters, Graciela Roy Ball at the end of the program. And without further ado. These guys are trying to rush me here this evening for some reason. There's a no. lot of chaos going on behind. Are you us. rushing them, Coach? There's a there's Please. a no. there's a Monday night party going on behind us here at the Tower Grill. So this place is raucous this evening. All right, Ed Cole, he's my co-host. <laughs> Hudson Wealthy joins us here on the set, and you guys already know who I am. So let's just get to it. Welcome in, Ed. How are you, Katie? Coach, good evening, Mr. Hello. Wealthy. How are you? I'm good. This is like, like a Kansas City start here to, to the, yesterday's game. Just a little sluggish, a little yeah. rockish, but uh, yeah. let's get to it. You guys are 9-0 uh, and against Ottawa. You took out the spirit. You crushed their spirit. And uh, now ACU, the number six team in the country, is 40-0 and against Arizona NAIA competition. Congratulations to you guys. Uh, Doug went out. It was a gritty win on the road. Yeah, it was a good game for us. Um, you know, we this is probably Ottawa's best team that they've had in school mm-hmm. history. Um, so we knew it was going to be a tough one going into it, and uh, we grinded it out. Um, we had our chances to kind of to blow it open. We just they, they just kept fighting back, um, and we ended up winning down the stretch. So it was a fun game, um, good environment, fun environment, and uh, our guys did a good job winning on the road. Matt Keeley's team only played eight guys. I think Jeff Rudder uh, played at least ten guys in that game. But there was a game of, of runs, right, like basketball mm-hmm. is. There's some streaks uh, to it. Um, I think uh, they had a uh, – you guys had a 13-5 to run in that first half. Yep. And then uh, you closed it out with some solid D, some clutch shooting. And then you begin that second half with a 7-0 run, kind of a tone-setting half. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, we, we, we got in the, the break at halftime. We knew we had to come out with the, the first punch, and our guys did a really good job of that. Um, just locking into the scouting report, uh, getting some easy buckets, um, and that kind of helped us propel to the victory that first, you know, four minutes of the second half. So, and of course, coach, you know, every every road game, no no game is easy, especially road games. You know, you're going to go to surprise. You're going to get the best from Ottawa. Yep. They they had five players in double figures. Your team had five players in double figures. But at the end of the day, all that matters is you got the dub. You walked out of that gym winners, and you're victorious. Yeah, conference road wins. Um, anytime you can get those, those are huge. Um, and Ottawa being just down the street, um, those are always fun games to win. So our guys did a good job. Credits to them in a environment where they're being yelled at by uh, the opposing fans and uh, maybe some calls here or there didn't go their way. They, they did a good job of responding. So, was that a hostile environment? Would you describe it that way at the Faith Center inside the Faith Center? Uh, it was definitely active in there. It was live. Okay. Um, maybe not as live as the event center, but uh, it, it was fun. Three and two in the GSAC. That's a that's a good turnaround to your season uh, yep. after the uh, first defeat there to Westmont. Yep, yep. It's uh, you know the GSAC. I think as we're seeing the season progress here, there's seven teams, eight teams that are going to be vying for the, those top four spots, those top three spots in the league. Um, so you're going to get everyone's best shot every night, and absolutely, it's, it's deep. So anytime you can win on the road, it's big. We're speaking with men's assistant basketball coach Hudson Wealthy here on the program. It's the Storm Report, episode 13. And, Hudson, uh, you, you, we, uh, Ed had referred to the bench, but I want to start with your starters there. Yep. Uh, Bryce Davis played big, yeah. right, uh, 13 points, double digits. Uh, he was active defensively. Yeah. And uh, it just seemed like, the, uh, you know, the way that you guys were moving bodies in and out, you had fresh 
fresh uh, legs the entire time. And, but you yep. were just able to hit the boards and kind of you know beat him in the physical presence. Yeah, Bryce is a bucket man. We we wanted to get the ball to him. Um, we thought we had uh, an advantage with him down there. And um, man, he 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 got some huge buckets there in the second half for us. Struggled Efficient bit. buckets. Yeah, right? yeah, just getting new getting to his moves and, and getting to the, the the line. And um, man, he's he's solid down the block. And when you look at the numbers, Coach, I like 11 of your 18 assists came from your starters. Bryce had four, Angelo Johnson had three, Robbie Wilson two, and Micah Bradford also two. So that just lets me know that the guys were active and they trusted each other. They can move the ball around to whoever needs to get the ball and get those baskets, which, of course, led to three of, their, three of your five starters getting a double figures. Yeah, and I think the 18 assists is huge for us because that's what we've been trying to grow towards is sharing the ball a little bit more. So to see that um, and our field goal percentage up a little bit, uh, just means we're getting really good shots, and um, that we, we took care of the ball too. So anytime you can great, get great shots and take care of the ball on the road, um, you're, you're setting yourself up for a chance to win the game. Yeah, that's good. When you can shoot 54% on the road, yeah. that's saying something. Yep. Coach, one of those guys that shares the sugar quite a bit is Kevon Williams. I know that Man. Coach Rudder had another comment mm -hmm. uh, in the write-up about Kevon. We mentioned, I believe, on the last program here, on the last Storm Report, we yep. talked about Kevon Williams, the pride of Deer Valley High School, played for Jed Dunn, just continues to get better, plays big minutes, yeah. uh, comes off the bench, and, and has really answered that role uh, as, a, as the sixth and seventh guy. But uh, he comes in and plays pressure defense, and yeah. he can distribute the floor, and uh, he's just fantastic. Yeah, he's incredible. He's our best passer by far. Um, and man, he's just, he's fun to watch when he gets in there, when he plays hard and, um, he's locked in, he, he's a special player. Um, and credit to him, like he was locked in going into that game and, um, you know, being the crosstown rival probably had something to do with it, but he, sure. he's an unbelievable <laughs> passer. Yeah. As far as getting your team together and figuring out uh, certain lineups and, and certain um, fives that you want to bring in outside of the starters, are, mm -hmm. are things starting to come together, Coach, as far as what you're trying to figure out? Okay, these five young men work together. We want to kind of rotate these guys in and out. We want to try this kind of five as opposed to this kind of five because yeah. these five guys work together and they bring a, a certain level of talent that maybe this other five. It's a little, it, it, You've got so many different lineups yeah. that you can roll in and out. Yeah, and that's, that's the cool part about this group is uh, there's so many different dudes we could play. Um, there's been some injuries that have caused us to kind of bring the, the rotation down a little bit. And I think that's given those guys who, who they, that, that may be questionable who are going to play, that they're going to play now so they're, they know they're going to get in. Um, well, that didn't sound good. Sound like someone dropped something. Uh, but, man, uh, yeah, our, our bench is um, – it's been more, more, more solid for sure. Uh, Marcus Green, uh, Dominic Gonzalez, and Paul Hayden just – Three freshmen coming off, bringing a spark. They've been really good for us. Okay. They're freshmen. Yeah. By by eligibility, right? They're yep. freshmen. Some of these guys played a year ago. Right. Um, Paul Hayden is another one of those guys that he understands his role, yeah. Hudson, and he comes in, and he, too, plays just lights out, a, a no-fear mentality. Yep. He's a great rebounder, a great, uh, great passer. He, can, he hits free throws. Um, he just, he's another – attribute in yeah. another guy that just makes things happen for you yeah he's another local kid that um he's big strong he, he he's a bucket as well um he can catch and shoot it he can get to the the rim um and he can guard a little bit so be able to be able to bring him off the bench and to provide a spark for us in different ways than maybe some of our starters can is, is, is huge um and like i've said before on the show like we've got several guys who could probably go start somewhere else but they're buying into their role here um, and that's what's going to make us special, hopefully, down the stretch. Mm -hmm. Dominic Gonzalez is one of those kids. He's another one that could probably go start, do yeah. some things elsewhere. Yeah. There's, we just have that much kind of depth. Yep. Um, Coach, what do you like about your basketball team? Man, I, I just think we have a growth-minded team right now. We've uh, obviously dropped two games in the league, um, but our guys have taken those in stride um, and have taken hard coaching a little bit in practice, and, and we're growing. Um, and I, could, I think you can see that in our just our offensive numbers like we talked about with our mm -hmm. assists and our field goal percentage. We're taking better shots. Um, and then we're, we're always going to guard. I think that's what we've proven so far this season. We can guard in the half court um, mm -hmm. at an elite level. Um, so as we continue to take steps offensively, um, it's just cool to see our guys with that growth mindset um, and not uh, comfortable, you know, being – 11 and 2 or whatever so you talked about the guarding do you like the, the the growth of your physicality as far as your your basketball team goes yeah I think we're a physical team I think um you know just looking at the pure numbers when any we're you know teams are scoring 62 a game against us so um obviously we're, we're I would say we have elite quickness but our you know Robbie and Bryce and uh Paul off the bench Marcus off the bench those guys are being physical when they come in and uh, making it tough for the opponent to finish at the rim so 
Coach, we want to reiterate two numbers. 9-0 and against Ottawa. Yep. Lifetime 40-0 and against Arizona NAI competition. That is quite an accomplishment for Jeff Roeder and his basketball program. We're visiting with here with uh, assistant men's basketball coach Hudson Welty. Uh, Hudson, uh, Huddy, as I like to say, uh, we've got Carroll College, right? Yeah. Carroll College, the number four team in the country. It will be a big one. This will be a rematch of last year's playoff game. Yep. And, and it was a game that uh, saw ACU have a chance to win, and it was Carroll College coming through with a victory. They eliminated AC last year in that postseason. But I want to say this is maybe the third meeting between these two programs. I think it, it's a split right now. I think it's one-to-one, if memory serves. But Carroll College, uh, they're good. They're well-coached. They're athletic. Yep. They've got a lot of dudes. They've got a lot of extremely difficult names to pronounce. And I'll tell you what, uh, they've, they've got a, a body count that is, that's impressive. And they're, like I mentioned, they're just, they're just very good. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's probably going to be a top 15 matchup is my guess. They'll probably be ranked third uh, when the poll comes out tomorrow. But they're, they're solid, man. They, they just they play the, the way they want to play. Um, they play a very simple style of basketball, but they're good at it. Right. Um, and mm-hmm. they're big, they're physical. Um, and they've got some guys who just have been around the block. They're they're probably one of the older teams in the NEI um, with Shamrock Campbell and, and Jovan, number 21. Can't yeah. pronounce his last name. Yeah, that, that's why I say Jovan yeah. S. Yes. Yeah, Jovan S. He's, he, but they're, they're good, man. Like, those guys, they hurt us last year in that game. Um, and even two years ago in 1920 down at the Cactus Classic, they, they hurt us. So it'll, it'll be a huge game for us. And, Coach, so the wars and the battles you've been through through your first – 13 games that should serve you well for carol it's just you're, you're come, just coming off the masters just uh, on december 4th that was a, a ranked team so yep. here we go with another ranked team be, being there number four against number 12 but still right uh, everything that's led you up to this all the tests that you've had over the 13 games yeah you know it's just one of the it's just just another team on your schedule although they're the number four team right ranked. Yeah. and i mean our guys will be will be turned up for it just because it's the team that, that kicked us out last year um, but that, that's why you want to schedule a, a tougher schedule in the non, early non-conference um, is for big games like this. And mm-hmm. I, I think even our, le- our five league games to this point have, have prepped us well for this one um, just because of the growth we've been able to have. Coach, you want to play people. That's what you always want to do. You want to yeah. schedule great opponents. You want to schedule the top uh, you know, venues in the country, wherever you can play. Play yep. U of A, play ASU, play GCU. Uh, you will only respond and uh, you'll yeah. see you know, the, the work – uh, going into that. so Yeah, you'll um, see where your program is, right, Kev? Yeah, yeah. no doubt about Playing it. That so talent. Let's clear up a couple things. One is that there is a another NAIA uh, Top 25 Coaches poll coming out Wednesday, so yep. it is Hudson Wealthy's anticipation that we will see Carroll College move from four to number three, and for ACU sitting at six, you think we can creep into that top five? That's where I was going with when I was leading the show. Yeah, I yeah, felt yeah. like this could have been a top five matchup in the country, and, uh, and, and so we'll see how things how the dominoes fall in that regard. But that's where we were going with that. We were trying right. to paint a legitimate picture <laughs> about what we're going five with this teams. thing. Yes. Big-time basketball game at Chandler Gilbert here on Friday night. We can assure you that. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be <laughs> huge. It's, it's a big game. Three games in four days. You also get Rocky Mountain College again playing in that Cactus Classic, and then you'll finish things up with Montana State University Northern. Uh, two more teams that are going to, you know, basically uh, they'll be – battle test for you yeah uh, they're all in the same league the frontier conference up there um these are huge for just our our uh some i mean there's some other teams in our league playing as well um just for the the arc and national tournament and seeding when it gets to the national tournament time so these are all three huge big games for us um and i think the florida trip prepped as well for this we played you know three games in four four game or three games in four days uh over over thanksgiving so that, that'll be a good uh just prep for for this as well this weekend yeah so. a good barometer right coach yep. For sure, our guys kind of know how to handle their bodies and, and that sort of thing. Did you say something about Marcus Green earlier? I did mention him, yeah. Love the play off the bench, love the physicality, yes. uh, the agility, and the fact that he can rise above and He's put athletic. it down. That, yeah. uh, it's nice to add him to Xander Bowers. Now, we got a couple yep. guys that can get up there and flush it Man. and uh, do some of that showy kind of stuff that we all uh, look <laughs> forward to. All right, what else do we have going on in the program? Uh, Hudson, uh, what are you looking for um, as far as uh, – the the next phase GSAC play after this tournament here you like where you're where you're headed right now yep so we'll uh, we'll play these three we'll we'll go home for a week or our guys will go home for a week and then we'll come back and play Park um, mm-hmm. which which should be a, a good one and then we'll play uh, Life Pacific and Vanguard will come to uh, the event center which league play um, important ones as we're uh, sitting at three and two so every game is going to be important in the second semester um, for a lot of teams in our league and. 
um, life and, and Vanguard will come to town for that. So takeaway basketball, what are you liking and how are you and your family enjoying Arizona? Oh, it's incredible. It's uh what is it? It's sixty three right now. Um where I'm from it's probably twenty three. So we'll I'll take I'm in shorts. Uh, Life is good, huh? Yeah. You can't beat it. Can't beat it. They're Let's shoveling go. snow somewhere else. Yeah. We know there's been tornadoes all across the Midwest, too, so uh, yeah. uh, thoughts and prayers for those people. But yep. Amen. Um, it is, uh, yeah, Hudson Wealthy, our guest. We're going to talk more basketball straight ahead on the program. On the Storm Report, we're going to talk with Rusty Rogers. He's going to be here. And if you thought we were getting along with Hudson Wealthy segment, we were because we're waiting <laughs> for Rusty Rogers. But he's going to be here in just a moment. <laughs> Ed, did you have anything else for Hudson Wealthy? Oh, so, so Coach, we had Angelo Johnson and, and Robbie Wilson on last week, two great young men. Yeah, how'd Just that go? Really good. Yeah. I mean, Angelo, was a little, he was a little soft-spoken, but he lets, it, he lets his, his play on the court speak for whatever he may not say off the court. But just talk about right. those two young men and how it is to coach those two, those two talented young kids. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with Robbie. He's just an incredible young man. He's or old man. We call him the old man. He's, he's been around quite a bit um, the last few years. But what is he? 30, he's 32 now, right? I think, yeah, I think he has a mortgage on, as well. He's not 32. He's not 32. He's, not no, 32. he's, no. he's, he's a, a senior, though. He's using his COVID senior year, and he's, he's a great kid. He's, he's our leader on our team. He's the, he's the guy that everyone looks up to. He's our vocal leader. Um, I've never heard someone talk more than he does on the court, um, which you want guys like that in your team. And then A.J., we, I mean, we talked about him before. He um, lets his game do the talking. Yes. Um, and he, I've just seen growth in him as well over the course of the season, just um, taking coaching from the new guys and um, just the, the different decisions he's making on the court. He's definitely grown as, as a player and as a young man. It's been fun to, to see that. It's always kind of fun to interact with the officials or not. Yeah. So as a coach, what do you look for as far as interaction with the players and the officials? Explanations, uh, you know, you know, uh, disciplinary type conversations. What, what do you look for as a coach when you see that interaction among official and player? Yeah, we, we coach our point guards um, to have a conversation with whoever they're standing next to at free throws. Um, but we have a standard in our program where we're not going to blame, complain, or defend ourselves with officials. Um, so, Which is a no. You can't win that situation anyway, right? Right. No. Yeah, I've no. never seen an official change a call for someone, a player coming up to him and, and, <laughs> and begging for it. So, But we've tried. I mean, you've got to ask, right? You yeah, have to of ask. course you've got to try. I guess. I guess. I've never seen it, though. I, I do think it's funny. When you point it out, I do see Robbie having conversations with the officials from time to time. Yeah. You know, and he's always got that, you know, bewildered look on his face. Like, where, like, where, was, <laughs> where was that coming from? Not like Tim Duncan, where Tim D- Duncan No one's played. ever called a foul on Robbie yeah, Tim, Wilson. Yeah, Tim Duncan played, like, almost 20 years in the league, and he never – committed a personal foul in the entire tenure so i thought robbie's not quite that way but so either way (laughs) we have some fun all right yeah coach in your first 13 games how have you grown and (laughs) and evolved in these first 13 games and we're just getting deep with these questions because we're rusty at exactly (laughs) he's like we're getting we continue it's like that we're supposed to go to a break on a broadcast they're like there's no break just keep rolling right Right. okay all right good deal we're going to talk chiefs here in just a second (laughs) No, I think uh, for me, just uh, moving into a new situation with new players, um, there's a big growth process in just the relationships with them, right? They're completely different than the players I played with when I played and the guys I, I uh, coached uh, the last couple of years. So that's been, that's been fun. Um, and, two, just learning the area and recruiting and um, all the little things that help a program go and, and trying to, to streamline it and, and make it as successful as we can. So it's been fun. Been fun. Looks like Rusty's uh, walking around here. Yeah, coach just walked in. So I did mention you were going to talk Chiefs. So how long have you been a Chiefs fan, and uh, have you been to Arrowhead? Because that's, I mean, that's be honest for a lot of people who watch football around yeah. the National Football League. Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, would be a, a bucket list type facility. So I'm curious uh, your take. Yeah. How did you get? Uh, uh, was it, it, you're born in uh, as a as a Chief fan, yep. or did you develop this on there. your own? I grew up there. That's where I, I lived most of my life. Okay. Um, Usually went to one game a year, and I was at the game where they broke the sound record against the Patriots on Monday Night Football. So okay, cool. I can coin that to, to my Chiefs experience. But uh, it's been fun watching them play over the last few years. They've been good. So We already found out he's a Patrick Mahomes guy. We try to do a little wheeling and dealing, some hypothetical situations. And Patrick Mahomes will stay with Hudson Wealthy. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we're going to have conversation with women's basketball coach Rusty Rogers. He joins us on the Storm Report right after this.
Welcome back inside the Tower Grill on the campus of Arizona Christian University. I'm Kevin Derryberry. He's Ed Cole. And joining us on the set is the women's basketball coach. That is Rusty Rogers. Rusty, welcome in on the show, and we appreciate you joining us here. I just wanted to mention right away, uh, congratulations on the 30-point drubbing of the Crosstowners in surprise inside the Faith Center. What was that score? 101-71, a magnificent uh, display of sportsmanship and athleticism. You guys shot the ball well. You did everything well, but I just have to ask you, you mentioned in your quote at the end of the game, you would have liked to have started the game a little bit better, and you re- referenced the, the prior game. You led 27-10 to 10 after the first quarter, Coach. I was just wondering what you're looking for in that regard because I thought you guys had a pretty good start to that one. Yeah, there's quite a few people that pointed that quote out to me. Uh, <laughs> uh, we, we were not pleased with the way we played, uh, to be quite honest with you. We okay. were very sloppy. We had more turnovers than they did. I think we had 23 or 24 turnovers. All right. Uh, and that's just uh, – that doesn't sit well with me. So, um, but yeah, the final score, uh, you know, when you look at it uh, cosmetically, it looks like a blowout type of game, but they gave us all that uh, well, we could handle it. it was, at one point, they scored on six straight possessions. Um, so, yeah, we, uh, we weren't very pleased. Well, at least you started off strong, as, as you mentioned, up 17 after one. Then you finished it in the fourth quarter, outscoring them 30 to 19. You shot 77% in that quarter, held them to 29% shooting. So at least the bookends, Coach, look good. The second and third quarter score-wise was kind of tight, but the first and fourth quarters is when, it, when the rubber really met the road, the start and the finish was strong. Yeah, that's true. Um, and those are things that we were, we've been emphasizing, too, for the last few games. So uh, i got to give our girls credit there. Uh, like I said, though, we, ju- we just in that, that brief period in the middle there where we were just sloppy and um, we just got to learn how to play with leads and how to build on leads. And it's been a characteristic of us all season long. Coach, one fine attribute about having uh, that lopsided of a game, you got to play 16 ladies in that game. So um, some, some solace there, if you will, right? Absolutely. Uh, our, each and every one of our girls works hard in practice and you know, it's nice to g- reward them with some playing time in a, in a real game situation. So that is definitely some solace for that. And when you look at your reserves, nine young ladies scored at least two points. Uh, Alyssa Alvarez and Shorter Kinney had 19 and 10 respectively. So that just goes, that speaks to your depth, Coach, that you were able, as you mentioned, to sub all these young ladies in, and they were able to make an impact at some point in some ways. Yeah, uh, the bench has really been one of our um, strengths this season, no question. Uh, typically we'll we'll outscore the bench of the other team and uh we got a lot of energy off you know off that bench especially Ange uh shorter Kenny she's she just gives us so much energy and uh, I think on any other team that we have had since I've been here she'd be a starter but uh she doesn't let it affect the way she goes about her day-to-day work and she's the most energetic and we got to get her on the show someday you just for you guys to see what kind of energy <laughs> that girls brings we're speaking with head coach Rusty Rogers with the AC Women's Basketball Program. Coach Rogers' team just had an impressive 30-point win on the road inside the Faith Center. Coach, we talked about going to McHale and that experience and what it was like for your program. When you go into a crosstown rivalry game like this inside the Faith Center and surprise, do you notice anything different about your team because you took those road trips early on this season and how they will walk in that arena and maybe just take care of business, whether it's getting loose or preparing or stretching, or do you just notice anything, anything different about your team's uh, preparation? I, I just think mentally um, it was where it's most noticeable. You know, we, we're not, we know we're not the big dogs in the state of uh, Arizona, and, and that was a humbling experience playing Grand Canyon and University of Arizona, and mm-hmm. that's something that you can always go back and motivate um, the young ladies with, uh, you know, when they think they're getting a big head. We just remember what it was like to go in a couple <laughs> of those venues and get pounded like we did, but it did it t- t- toughen us up um, and gave us a look at really what it, how yeah. f- the physicality of it and you know how much more energy we can pour into our own game so it definitely has some benefits and like you said going on the road especially in a hostile environment um we faced you know 6000 fans we're not going to see that probably cumulative all season on the road so that definitely had its benefits good and going to surprise and it being Ottawa did that lend a little bit more to it coach oh most definitely uh, that, that cross town rivalry and you know they're down right now, but they're going to be they're going to be just fine here um, once they once uh, Coach Wig gets a chance to get a couple of recruiting classes in there. So, like I told him before the game, we're going to try to get them while we can, and uh, fortunately we did. So, 
Coach, you got one coming up here, another big one. You play a top 25 team uh, in the nation. You get the, the University of Montana Western, uh, a game to be played right here inside the event center here in Glendale on campus. That game is on Saturday, and the fellows will be playing in the Cactus Classic, but uh, you'll get the, uh, the venue to yourself. And you get another, another tough matchup and, again, another opponent that you scheduled well and will be more uh, excellent competition for your basketball team. Yeah, um, they won the national championship just a couple years ago. Um, I think it was three seasons ago they were national national champs NAI and they're very strong um, you know they're going to bring up everything that we can ask for into our facility it's nice getting them at home but you know we we point when we put this schedule together we knew that what our goals were and the only way we we're going to get our goals is is play the very best competition that we mm-hmm. can find and fortunately we've got a, a few of them coming into our place which makes it extra nice but we're going to have to really play on top of our game more consistency um, but this is the kind of game you know we should really easily get fired up for because if we want to make a name for our program, we got to beat at least one of these teams that, that's on our schedule that's nationally ranked, and we got several of them. What kind of challenges uh, do they pose for you? They're extremely disciplined. i um, been watching a lot of video on them, uh, d- just extremely disciplined. They don't make mistakes. Um, you know, so in our defense and in our offense, we got to make sure that we're, we're running our offense efficiently. Um, and defensively, we've got to be on our toes because they have a lot of weapons. They don't have one single player that's, you know, dominating. They have a bunch of really good players, and they mm-hmm. got three good girls off the bench. So we can't focus on any one player. And uh, they show some different looks that we haven't seen. They have a really good matchup zone defense that uh, we were working on today in practice, um, trying to figure out ways to, to get at that. So, um, yeah, it's, and this the experience that they have. They have a good senior group and that's been through the rigors. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a challenge all the way around. And for me, Coach, at least three things that I'm looking at from the stats from OUAZ, what's going to be paramount in that game? We talked about the bench play, rebounding, 15 offensive rebounds for your basketball team. You out-rebound on OUAZ by 12, so that'll be paramount to, to win the rebounding game and also the assist game. You had 23 the other night, so being able to move the ball around and, and for the young ladies to find the right young ladies to get the ball to so they yep. can start hitting shots and start making things happen offensively. Those are going to be three keys, at least for me, to, to a victory that night. Yeah, rebounding has been a big emphasis for us. Um, you know, every day we talk about game plans and it's assists. I mean, uh, it's rebounds and it's um, – and it's us taking care of the ball, turnovers, reducing turnovers. And we've, had a, we've been really susceptible to offensive rebounds too. So, you know, we're giving teams 30 extra possessions with our turnovers and the offensive rebounds we give up. And that Ottawa game, we did a really good job on the boards. Yeah, we got some offensive rebounds. We got some second looks. And a game prior to that was also a little bit of a change too. So maybe we're turning the corner there. Well, Coach, one lady that is definitely uh, has been leading by example on the floor is going to be our next guest. And we'll, we have two guests coming up, of course, T. Waters and then Graciela Roy Ball. But Graciela, one turnover out of that 23 with her 18 points. So she's uh, clearly taking care of the rock for your team as that floor general. Yeah, it, that wasn't always the case prior to that. I know uh, I, I got up to, and mentioned it to Grassi after the game last game. She only had one turnover. She's been averaging about three or four a game. Uh, freshman year, you know, that you kind of expect, expect that. So hopefully this is a, a change uh, in her game where she's taking care of the basketball a little bit better. Um, so, yeah, that was a really, really encouraging statistic. And we look at that assist turnover ratio. I think she had four assists, one turnover. So that's, that's you know, that's kind of where we want to get with our guards. And, Rusty, I'd like to point out when, when Graciela Roybal comes in from Hamilton, uh, Graciela has played in the state championship game at the 6A Conference in the last three consecutive years. So she brings in uh, jewelry as well, a 2019 state champion winner. So uh, to have that kind of player being recruited here at ACU, it's just it's a, a, an, an indication of what you're doing here, Rusty, and the kind of players and young ladies that you're bringing in uh, to campus here. Yeah, both her, her and her Hamilton teammate Amari Burnett are, have done a really good job for us stepping in as freshmen. Um, regardless of, you know, what level of play that we're at, any, any kind of a freshman moving into a high school situation where they're playing against and with girls three, four years older than them, mm-hmm. it's a challenge. It's a challenge, and both of them have handled it extremely well. And also, how great is it for, for, the, for the upperclassmen to bring those young ladies in and, and help them up as they get uh, acclimated to, a, to, to GSAC play, having to step their games up now that this is, this is big girls basketball? yeah. yeah. I'm really proud of our upperclassmen, the way they've handled, um, you know, the younger players and, and uh, the way they're, they're nurturing them and bringing them along because, you know, there's a whole other aspect of it, and that is they're challenging them for their minutes, you know, and, 
and uh, they could have an, a totally different af- approach to it, but they've really mentored them and done a really good job with them. And that's, that's probably one of the things I'm most proud of with our older girls is just, you know, they realize we've got some good young players and they're going to make them better. Coach, we have two young ladies here that are going to join the set here momentarily. We want to thank you for your time visiting us on the Storm Report here. Continued success, and uh, it's just fun to watch uh, the growth of your basketball team as you guys do battle in conference play and uh, continue to work on your game and, and uh, grow this program here at ACU. We sure will, and I hope you enjoy T and uh, Grassi. They're great young ladies. We'll look forward to that. T Waters and Graciela Roy Ball straight ahead on the Storm Report. Don't go away. You will, we won't even... <laughs> Welcome back inside the Tower Grill for the Storm Report, episode number 13 for December 13th, 2021. I'm Kevin Derryberry, your program host. He's Ed Cole. Joining us on the set is T for Three, T Waters, and Grassi Roy Ball. First of all, Grassi Roy Ball is from Hamilton. Shout out to Huskies. the East Valley. The Hamilton Huskies played for Trevor Niter. And as I mentioned uh, with Rusty Rogers, uh, the new breed of recruit here at ACU. This young lady has a, a championship ring to her credit from 2019. Has played in the state, the best game that you can play in on the biggest venue in the last three years at Hamilton High School. So Graciela Roy Ball and T. Waters, welcome in. How are you ladies tonight? Doing great. Yeah. <laughs> Fresh off a big win, a 30-point victory over Ottawa. How sweet was that to, to go on the road and uh, to take care of business against the Crosstowners? It, it felt good after uh, two losses to some high, high-ranked high teams in the nation. It felt good to finally get a dub. Yeah, and we got everybody involved too, which was fun. So, 16 of you ladies got to play in that game. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> And Big did roster. it, as I asked Coach, did it make it sweeter because you went cross town to surprise and it was Ottawa, it was a spirit, you went into their building and you beat them by 30 points? Did that make it much better? It did feel good, especially with Kay coming to us and a little bit of the issues that happened there. It felt, it felt good to get that for her, for the team. So let's make sure everybody knows who Kay is. That's Kirsten Shinsky, right? Yes, All right, sir. so Kirsten Shinsky, uh, a thousand point score um, for Ottawa and ACU in combination. She had started her career at Ottawa. She's here now at ACU, and so the girls and everybody, the coaching staff, the community, we've all embraced Kirsten Shinsky. That had to been pretty sweet for her to get that victory. Mm-hmm. Especially after getting hurt last year to them. So it felt good to have her on the court with us and, and get the 30-piece dub. T, I've got to mention your numbers. <laughs> 19 minutes of play. You were perfect from the field. You were perfect from three-point range. You were perfect at the free-throw line. Uh, let's see here. Another board, six dimes, six assists. Um, even Grossi didn't have six dimes in this game. She just had four. But nine points and uh, just a magnificent stat line for you. Again, you must have had a, just a tremendous evening that night. Well, when I got shooters like Grossi, <laughs> makes Stop. it easy. <laughs> No doubt about it. That way to pass on the glory right there. And Grassi, you finished with 18 points. I don't know if that's your career high just yet here at ACU, but it's one of your better games early on. Yeah, uh, definitely. On Tuesday against Park, it was a little rougher game, so it was really good to get that under my belt. So, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, T, for you, that was your third start of the season in 11 games. Obviously, this is a dumb question, but you like starting, don't you, over over being a reserve and, and coming in? <laughs> yes, sir. But I'm going to play where I'm needed. If I need to come off the bench to help us, then that's fine. But I definitely do prefer starting. 
<laughs> course, what, what athlete would say they don't like starting? Yeah. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Well, T also helped us on the football broadcast, so uh, that's one other way we know T Waters. Yes, thank but you, uh, T. we've known T uh, the last couple of years here, doing her thing on campus. This is the first year for Grassi to be on campus. But you know, Grassi, I want to a- ask you, how was that recruiting process for you? I, I know with a 4.0 plus that you had enormous opportunities to go play anywhere. How did you end up here at ACU, and what was the attraction for you? Yeah, um, I just wanted to stay close to home. I'm really family oriented, and um, and it was a Christian college, which also played a big part in it. So, and Amari was going there, and she's like my best friend. So. Okay, <laughs> membership yeah. has its privileges yeah. sometimes, huh? <laughs> and, and also for UT, you know, you're from Tacoma. You've been to Texas, Pebble Hills High School. When when you looked at Arizona Christian University, what is it about this 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 venue and this organization, this entire university that attracted you to come here to Arizona? Um, I really liked the culture, how inviting everyone was, how close everyone was, how small the school was, actually. Um, I like to be hands-on with things, so if it's like the, all the schools that I went to were very large schools, so it's hard to get one-on-one time with the professors or even be one-on-one with, like, all the people that you're going to school with. So just being able to be close with everybody, I think that was one of the biggest factors in bringing me here. T, what are you studying now? Uh, business administration. And how's that going for you? It's going good. One more semester. One more, huh? Almost there, huh? So, so Kevin, according to her profile, says she plans to get into marketing or advertising. Do you still want to do that? Um, I would actually like to go more into, like, sports directing, producing type, what I was doing with the football games. Oh, nice. A little more behind the scenes, huh? A little more production oriented, huh? (laughs) Yes. Grassi, with that impressive GPA, uh, are you taking advanced classes here on campus, or are you just, you know, easy for me to say, run-of-the-mill type classes? What, what's that? How's it working for you inside the classroom? Yeah, um, so I'm just I'm majoring in biology, so they're a little more difficult classes, but. Um, That's what I meant by advanced classes. (laughs) More difficult classes are what we call advanced classes, right? But I took all AP classes at Hamilton, so um, it's still, it wasn't too big of an adjustment for me. Can you imagine that? (laughs) All AP classes. So the next level is just like, it really wasn't really that big of a transition, to be honest with you. Yeah. That's impressive. So, Grassi, how are you, how are you adjusting to, to, the, to GSAC and being here at, at AC? You've got through your first 11 games. You're averaging 11 points a game, and you're just killing it on the court. So, <laughs> I mean, you come, from, you come from Hamilton, and you just come from a championship pedigree, and you bring that pedigree right up here to ACU. So it, it looks like the transition, transition has been pretty smooth for you. Yeah, I've, thankfully I've had, like, some really great teammates that have helped build me up and um, increased my confidence on, out there, and so it's been really fun so far. <laughs> You no know, no you, pressure for a freshman, Kevin. <laughs> not at all. But no. I mean, but you played in big games in high school and at the 6-8 conference level at Hamilton, which you, the body count is probably almost 3,000 student athletes. You, you play uh, big schools. Yeah. Have you, was there an opponent or a championship game maybe against Xavier or just somebody that you played against in high school that you, you kind of recognize, you know, you, you can appreciate the next level you're playing in now here in, the, in AIA? Uh, yeah, I think so. We had to play Valley Vista in the last two state championships. and The monsoon, yeah. Rachel Matekis, <laughs> yeah. yes. And uh, junior year was against Sophie, uh, Mar- Sophia Martinez. And <laughs> she was face guarding me the whole time, which I remember very vividly. But Who's a little bit yeah. bigger and a little <laughs> taller than you, right? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, but. I was trying to describe the face guarding. Like this, yeah. it, was a, it was quite a matchup, I yeah. remember. Yeah, but um, I, I think that pushed me a lot to work on my game and. Um, work on just getting shot ups quicker and everything. So, very cool. T Dub, for you being a, being a senior, being an upperclassman, one of the one of the bigger sisters. Are you enjoying that role, being the big sister that that Grassi and, and some of the, the like some of the other um, lower lower class uh, young ladies can can bounce stuff off of you and just r- relate to you and just sit down and talk to you about you know what you've been through you know in, in your career that you're that you're coming toward the end of your career. They can just kind of kick ideas and and just sit and talk to you as as you being their big sister. Uh, yes, yeah, so we actually, I mean, we've only went on one trip, but we usually have like little, <laughs> little team get togethers where we just bounce ideas and, you know, just talk to each other, see how, how we're doing like mentally, physically. Um, yeah, it feels really good being an upperclassman because I know when I was, uh, underclassman, it felt good to have those people that I could rely on. 
especially being so far from home. So, yeah, I, I feel good uh, being someone that they could look up to, talk to. And, Grassi, how important is it to have those relationships and, and start to build that stuff as you're, you're again, you're 11 games into your collegiate career, to have, to have your, your, your big sister and your other sisters that, as you mentioned, just kind of kick ideas off of them. When you're having bad days, you can text your sisters and say, hey, girl, I'm having this kind of day. Let's meet up. Let's have some coffee. Let's go to, you know, let's, let's just kick it and, you know, let's just, just kick it so I can kind of clear my head. Yeah, it just um, it increases so much trust in between us and um, I know I can always rely on T and she can always rely on me and um, I think that also transfers onto the court and I think you can definitely see it in our play. One Bible verse that you two share in common as well as Brooke Polite is Philippians 4 1 3. Can you share that with us? Do you know that verse or, do, or what yeah. is it what is it about that verse that uh, why is it that so many of all. you ladies uh, all share that same type of mindset? Um well, I think it's important to know, like, through any struggles or, like, any lows, any highs, that everything that we do is for Christ. And I think that's really what that, that verse is saying. I can do all things through Christ. So no matter what I go through, like, I always know that he'll be able to pull me through the rough. And that's kind of uh, what helps me get through sometimes is just that verse and knowing that he's there for me, protecting me, guiding me. And, yeah. That verse is uh, is quite powerful, and it, that verse is uh, is with a lot of people. I can mm-hmm. assure you that. I just found it to be interesting that, that the, the three girls uh, that we were going to speak to Brooke earlier, and we, we saw that in her bio as well. But uh, that's impressive, ladies, very much so. Thank you. <laughs> very much so. Uh, so so as, as we, I guess, kind of piggyback off of Philippians 4.13, I want you guys to talk about your families. Uh, I'm sure they'll, they'll be watching. If they're not watching tonight, they'll watch later on, uh, you know, when they pop it back on YouTube. Give, uh, so, T, give, give your family some love. And then, Grassi, after T gives her family love, I want you guys just to shout out your family because I'm sure they've been instrumental in both, both of your lives. Uh, like, just say hi to them? Or yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, Dad, hey, Mom, brothers, sisters, uh, cousins, all of you. I love you guys. Yeah. Remember seeing that growing up? Hi, Mom. Yeah, was, hi, Mom. <laughs> Go ahead, Grassi. Go ahead, Grassi. Yeah, hey, Mom and Dad, um, brothers, too. <laughs> love you guys, and thanks for everything. <laughs> I like to ask uh, this question from time to time, and that is, what is the one thing about um, that when you achieve something really cool in the game of basketball on the court, do you like that, that really sweet no-look assist? Do you like the steal, go down and take it in and lay it up? Or uh, you know, what is your favorite thing about playing the game of basketball to you? Because I know Graciela likes to take charges. <laughs> twice mm-hmm. in the state of Arizona. She yes. was the, uh, the young lady that led the, the entire state in taking charges at Hamilton. That's the kind of player that we have here in Grassi. She's gritty. She's, uh, she's um, very gritty. passionate about her game, let alone being a scholar baller. But what is it about the game for you, T? I know what she's going to say, but what do you like, what do you like to do uh, the most? Um, I would say defense is probably one of my pride possessions. I mean, especially like – we played Warner Pacific earlier this year, and we were down 17, like, nearly the whole game. And it took us until the fourth quarter with a minute left to get into the game and then end up winning the game. Mm-hmm. So it's like games like that where you could just snatch the game from them, and it all comes from defense. Like, offense is cool, but it's really defense that wins championships. Grassi, how are you going to top that? That's pretty, that was well <laughs> said, T. That was well <laughs> stated. Knocked, yeah, she knocked that one uh, out. Come on, 4.7. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I think taking charges, it just brings so much energy to the team. Um, and just like yes, it does. being able to sacrifice my body for something so much greater than myself, um, it's always a great opportunity and it gets everybody hyped. So yeah. <laughs> Taking a charge, that is the best. You know, you got the two-handed <laughs> slam, the reverse. The window. There's a lot of things that people could do, but taking a charge, everybody can relate to how tough that is yes. and, uh, and what that can do do to bring uh, your team uh, up another level and boy you do that as well as anybody so ladies thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us here on the storm report we've enjoyed talking with you you have an incredible amount of student athletes here men and women that we've had a chance to speak to on the storm report and all of you to a to a a man and a woman are just uh, incredible we've we've been delighted to have such amazing athletes and people to talk to on this program Uh, it's our privilege thank you thank you thank you for Ed Cole, for T. Waters, and for Graciel Rabal and Robert Nielsen, <laughs> and for Rusty Rogers, as well as Hudson it. Welty. That's the <laughs> storm report for episode number 13 for December 13th. I'm Kevin Derryberry. So long for now. Salute.